Okay, um, here's the circuit. Now, this, if you have found this circuit on the internet, it's not a very good circuit. It doesn't work right. Um, it says 15 volts in both places, and if you build it like this, a lot of times it won't oscillate and it'll burn up all your MOSFETs. So the best thing you can do is change this right here to 12 volts, and it'll work perfect. <coughs> um, the circuit calls for an STP30NF10. Well, that works okay, but there are better MOSFETs than that. Than that. Um, I have found that this circuit up here is a little better. Um, I changed the MOSFET to a P55NF06. It's also called an STP55NF06. And it works a lot better. The circuit says to use a 2 microhenry choke. Well, that's a little bit small. I changed it to 8. That helps keep the RF out of the power supply. I kept blowing up the power supply capacitors um, and was having some other trouble too. <clears throat> so, um, now let's go over here and look at the transformer. This is a microwave oven transformer that I rewound to um, give me 10.8 volts. AC with a rectifier, it uh, gives me 15.3 volts. Now this is the power supply I built. <clears throat> I started out with one bridge rectifier. Now if you found some of these bridge rectifiers on eBay, they come from China, they're a thousand volts, 50 amps, well, they really only will take 15 amps, and then they blow up. So uh, I blew up several of them. Of course, when my circuit was not as efficient as it is now, I've made it much more efficient. It used to work good with one bridge rectifier, but then once I started pulling more amps, I had to change it to two rectifiers, and I blew both of those up. Now I have five rectifiers in parallel. And now you got to have 20,000 microfarads to get good flat line DC. You don't want any pulsating DC. It'll give your circuit a lot of trouble. Now, uh, you need to solder some .01s, some .001s, and some .001 uh, microfarad capacitors across your electrolytics. That helps to um, filter out any RF that comes back through the circuit. <clears throat> now I have uh, changed the chokes on the, <clears throat> the original circuit. I got an 8 millihenry right there. In the positive side, I got an 8 millihenry on the negative side. And I have a 4K resistor and bleeder resistor to help discharge the capacitor. It discharges in about five minutes otherwise it takes four days now one of the keys to this circuit is this capacitor bank right here you can use smaller capacitors but it really doesn't help very much the point four seven UFs are working great you want to get them just as close together as you can you got I got a row of four on the bottom a row of four on the top and it gives me the frequency I want. I want, I'm looking for 60 KHZ, and I'm actually getting 61, which is perfect. I found out that certain frequencies work much better than others for um, making things get hot. If you get the frequency too high, you get, too, you get a real high skin effect, and the skin effect is a problem. It won't heat the part up. It just heats, the, it tries to heat the surface. It creates a lot of too many eddy currents and too much resistance and it doesn't, doesn't work as, as well. So your target is 60 KHZ for the frequency. Now the idle current on this 
unit is actually 89 khz but once you put the part in it it drops um, I made a few changes yesterday and it actually my frequency doesn't drop to 60 khz anymore the changes that I made yesterday because has affected the frequency and now it only drops to 74 so I'm going to have to add one more maybe two more capacitors to get my frequency down closer to 60. Um, now one of the things that makes this work so well is this cap capacitor bank every time it discharges it just, it just bam sends a pulse of current through that little claw right there and that's what really makes it work great so um, now let's look at this circuit circuits again. There's a lot of different ways to build this circuit. This is the this is one of the ways I work. I tried building it for the first time right off the internet, and it just gave me all kinds of trouble. I kept blowing capacitors and blowing MOSFETs, and I finally learned there's a better way to build it. So <clears throat> this is my next circuit that I. Uh, built but I only use two of the um, 0.47 microfarad capacitors and my frequency was 21 khz which was t way too high it took two minutes to heat a little tiny nail up um, and I, I put a 7812 voltage regulator in a circuit to get 12 volts right there and so that worked pretty good but my power supply was still putting out ripple DC and that was giving me a lot of trouble <clears throat> so I changed it again um, I got a whole lot more capacitors in the circuit and uh, let's see oh here's one this this if you build this circuit with just like one capacitor and don't make it too efficient like I've got it it'll actually run on, on batteries the alkaline batteries put out 8 amps a piece you put 12 volts here and 3 volts here it's a real easy circuit to build. You use different batteries, some of the rechargeable batteries, some of those that put out 40 amps. And this thing will run fine, even like I got it built now, because it's pulling about 30 amps the way it is. <clears throat> okay, so my final circuit is right here. And uh, anyway, you, you can see all the, pretty much what I've done here. I'm hoping to, get a good picture here so you can put the video on pause and read it all and I don't really have to tell you everything because I'm running out of time on my camera it's going to time out here in a minute and then I won't be able to finish um, now here is a way to parallel MOSFETs if you're wanting to um, get some really high power you can par parallel your MOSFETs and these MOSFETs right here are, the, are 55 amps. You're looking for really low voltage, I mean really low MOSFET resistance. And these are 0.015 ohms, which is great. <clears throat> They're not a very high voltage, but so far I haven't had any trouble with that. Power supply voltage is 15 volts, but the RF voltage is 70. Um, so, Let's uh, turn the circuit on here and play with it a minute and see if I can get this camera shut and plug it in. Now you just, it should heat this thing up for this. I'm going to do the quarter inch steel rod first. You can hear the power increase when I put this in here. I should have, I should have hooked my meter up, but Starting current is, um, I don't know, I, I forgot. Starting current down around 8 amps, 6 or 8 amps. Idle current. Once I put this in there, the steel rod in there, it goes to 18.6 amps. The bigger rod will, uh, the 3H rod, will pull around 30 amps. And I've got a whole assortment of coils that I've experimented with. Um, it's getting pretty hot and it usually heats up pretty red in about 25 seconds. And it's starting to get hot, too hot to hold here. I'm going to have to 
go put it in a pan of water. Okay, get rid of this thing. All right, now, here's, that's an eight turn coil. Let's not turn this thing off. I don't want to just let it sit there. Um, these um, heat sinks weigh three ounces. And in about two minutes, they'll be 130 degrees. You don't want your MOSFETs to get any hotter than 150 or they'll blow up. I've blown several of them up. You don't want to do that. Um, the six turn coil will increase your frequency, makes your parts get a little bit hotter, but you gotta add more capacitors to get your frequency down to 60 kHz. This is a different shape coil. The only reason I made that is so I could slide that up inside this piece of pipe and uh, it makes the pipe red hot. And let's see, I think that's about it. Um,